On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. As always on my channel, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad, but you can probably apply the process and techniques that I'm going to show you during this tutorial on a different app and whatever tablet you happen to be using. But as such, I've opened an A4 canvas. So that's 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. In terms of the brushes I'm going to be using, I only use the brushes that come with Procreate. I occasionally change them, but I'll let you know when I'm doing that. But for this tutorial, I shouldn't be amending them at all. So they're just the default settings on the default brushes. So within airbrushing, I'm going to be using the soft brush, which is at the top of the list, and the medium brush. So in addition to the airbrushing, I'm going to be using the artistic leatherwood brush. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know it's one of my favorites. And I'm also going to be using within sketching the 6B pencil. In terms of the colors, I've got some pre-selected colors here. Each of these colors has what we call a hexadecimal code linked to it. And all of these codes are down in the video description. If you take a note of them and type them in one at a time here, press enter, the color appears up in this top circle, and then you can tap it together and construct the same palette that I'm using. Alternatively, to save you some time, next to the color codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file there for free. You'll also see links to my Instagram and the Facebook group that you can join and share your versions too. Before I get started, if you like this kind of tutorial, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell notification to be notified of all my future videos too. Okay, on layer one, I'm just gonna to go to my first color, which if you go to the color wheel here, you can see perhaps it's just a slightly warmer version of the white. I don't want a pure white, so I'm gonna drag from the color circle into the canvas, and it has flood filled it with that new color, but it is very subtle. From there, I'm gonna create a new layer on top, go back to my colors, I'm gonna use this second color on the top row. I'm gonna use in my brushes, the artistic, the leatherwood brush. Again, just the default settings on that. I'm gonna have it at 2% size at the top end of 2% because there is some wiggle room within each percentage. So I'm putting it at the very top of 2% size and 100% opacity. If I do reduce the opacity of this details, I'm gonna do it on the layer rather than the brush. And just above halfway, I'm going to do a set of treetops. Now I've just run it in a straight line initially, don't care too much. Then I can go back in and just create some more peaks and troughs within this line. And this is gonna be the kind of distant set of trees. It doesn't need to be terribly thought over or done in particular detail because it's gonna be blurred in in a moment anyway. But you're just getting the impression that there are some distant trees. So you need to perhaps just create a variety of different heights. So some slightly taller ones that perhaps just stick up a little bit more and then Maybe you could have a whole section over on this side that just rises a little bit. I mean, you could play around with this. So it's not quite a straight line if you want, however suits you. Okay, so I'm going to then just drag and flood fill that remaining area. Now, it might be that it flood fills it too much or it does too little. So you find the correct place on that slider threshold until it fills it just the right amount. And then you can go as go back in and plug in all those little spaces and gaps anyway. Easily done. Going to go back to my layer, tap on the end symbol and just reduce it to about the 70%. I'm going to go to my adjustments also, the Gaussian blur, and blur it in to about the 4%. I'm going to go back to my layers and create a layer on top. Go in with my soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to go back to this first color, which was a warm white. I'm going to have it at around 10% size and about 10% opacity. I'm just gonna go along this top line now, just a few times, just to kind of soften that transition of the treetops in with the sky, just a few times like this. And then I will also go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in just to smooth that in and do it to about 15%, and that works better. I'm going to create a new layer on top. Go back to my colors, I'm gonna choose the third color, and I'll probably stay with the soft brush down to 4% size, and I'll put it at around, well, I might as well put it 100% opacity, and then I can always slide it downwards on the layer properties. So I'm gonna do line all the way across. I'm not really worried about it 
being an absolute straight line. In fact, I might even just create some variety in there anyway. And then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in to about the 20%. Go to the layer, duplicate that layer because I want it to be stronger. Tap on the layer itself and tap on merge down and it condenses it down to the original layer again. I'm going to create a layer on top, layer five, go back to my colors. I'm still on this third color along. Set the brush to 1% and about 50% opacity. And I'm just going to, from within this area, create some trunks that kind of stick up. I'm not going into any major detail on this. I'm just doing a series of impressions of trunks, just stripes that don't go all the way to the top. This is like a, a lower lying set of tree trunks and I'm going to blur it in anyway. So you're not going to get a distinct sense of these. They're just going to add texture to the mix. So you can do all the way along, all the way across. So I'll just fast track through this. Most of this middle area is going to be obscured by bright sunlight that's coming down through the scene. So anything done in this area is pretty much going to be obliterated anyway, but we'll do it. There's no harm. Okay, and then I'm quickly going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in to about the 4%. Go to my eraser, put that also on the soft brush at about 4% size and about 40% opacity and strength. And just slightly soften this top edge just to reduce the impact of that top part of these distant tree areas like that. So it just kind of blends into that other area too. Go to my layers and create another layer. Go to my colors. I'm going to use the fourth color now. Still on my soft brush, but this time to about the top end of 2% and about 50% opacity. And I'm just going to take this warm color across like so. And again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur that in to about the 15%. Back to my layers and create a new layer on top, layer seven, back to my colors. And I've got two colors now on the end. So I'm gonna to go to the lightest one. So second in from the right, Still with my soft brush, still set to about 2% size and opacity to about 25%. And depending on how you press on, I press on quite lightly. If you're really quite heavy handed, you might wish to turn the opacity down a little bit, but I think you'll find it easier if you try to follow and just try to do it lightly like myself. So I'm just creating a slight sharpness there because we have the woodland that we're gonna do in the foreground, then we're gonna have some water and then we're gonna have things on the other side of the water. So this is the water that I'm creating as a separation between the two woodland areas. And we can leave some stripes and bands. You don't need to, it doesn't need to be consistent. I have some bands that cut across like this, for example, maybe another one. I've got a really nice wide gestures like this. And it's broken deliberately because on the same layer, I'm gonna to go to the end color and I'm gonna reduce it down to the lowest part of 2% and increase the strength of this because I want this to be a little bit more impactful and sharper, so about 50% strength. And I just want to pick out some details, some bands of extra kind of variety of tone cutting through this water. It's gonna be difficult to really see what's going on in the water because everything we do on top is really going to dominate, but we can't just have nothing. So we're adding some different textures here in the, the background. Again, it doesn't need to be spent. Again, it doesn't need a huge amount of time spending on this. Just trying to get a sense of these bands of something that cuts through the water there. I'm just gonna go back to the lighter color, perhaps just in this very more distant, as it encroaches upon the very edge. You might just get hints of more highlights, just on the, just as it laps against the other side of the river, you might get just a bit more broken surface to the water and it reflects a little bit more of the light back. You often find that. And maybe another bit that juts out here and it just gathers a bit more light, like so. And again, just some other kind of bands of light that cut through here as well. And if you're not entirely happy with the, the gestures you've made, you could go to the smudge tool, put it again on the soft brush, put it slightly higher. I would recommend about 3%, not, not 100%, but maybe so 60, 70% I'll try. And you could always just sort of drag these colors along a little bit and it just helps them smooth them in. If you feel they're a bit, I don't know, a bit too sketchy, a bit rough looking, you can just smooth the impact of them in a little bit. You can always adjustments Gaussian blur them. 
just a couple of percent to help that as well. I don't feel I need to do too much of that, but certainly 2% will just slightly take the edge off it and works arguably a bit better. I feel like on the other side, I want a slightly warmer color coming into the mix. So I've got a nice warm color here at the end of the second row, not the end color, but the one slightly back. So the second color from the right on that back part, I'm just gonna have it at the 2% size, really low at about 15% strength. And just on the bottom, just before it hits the water, in fact, that strength is too much. Let's reduce that even further. I really want this to be subtle, so I'm going to put it down to about 5%. And I just want to bring in the sense that there's some warmer, dry kind of grass colours coming through. I'm going to have them in the foreground, so you'd certainly expect them to have them on the other side of the river too, on the ground. And again, it doesn't need to be overly refined. It's just tapping in a hint of that lighter warmer colour. We do have atmospheric conditions that would make it slightly cooler in the distance. You don't want to overdo that. A little can go a long way. Okay, I'm going to go to our layers and create another layer, layer 8. Back to our colours. We've used all of the top row colours. I'm going to go to the first colour on the bottom row. Again, with that soft brush, up to about 4% size and about 40% strength opacity. And just as we come into this bottom part now. We're just going to start fading in our features down here. So we're going to have this grassed area that all our more foreground trees are going to grow from. So we can put a band in. Why not increase that up to much larger brush size? Just, just really cover this in really. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to soften this in slightly. So I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in. About 10%. Create a new layer on top, layer 9, with the second colour. And again, with the soft brush, I'm going to put it down to about 2% size and about 30% strength. And I'm going to start building in some textures here now, just some hints of more things going on, some bands of stuff accumulating on this edge of the river. Again, don't take too long of that. I just really tapped in some marks. That's all. And then up again to about 5%. And then just at the lowest section of that, I can just build it in a, a bigger band. We're not really going to see that at the end, but it, it just starts to shut down some of the lights down here. And again, let's just build up that impression in the lower sections too. We are going to end up having it quite dark at this lower bit before we add some foreground textures. I'll create another layer on top, layer 10. So back to our colors. Probably going to skip to this dark colour here. And you see it is very much in the brown spectrum, but it is a very dark version. Back to my brushes and the artistic leatherwood brush. 2% size and just to step back from 100 at about 70% will do. And I'm just going to in include some perhaps bushes and things that are just here, just on this side of the river. It's low lying. and just tap in a few shapes. Again, I wouldn't really spend a long time doing these, just getting a hint of something. A little goes a long way. And I probably obscure a lot of these again with trees, so really don't spend a long time on that. Just a hint, Gaussian blur under adjustments, blur it in to about 3% will do. Back to my eraser, which is on the soft brush. It's on, well, let's put it to about 5% size and low on the strength at about 20%. And I'm just going to slightly nudge out the bottom of these shapes so they kind of they kind of blend in a little bit. So really it just reveals the top edge is a little bit sharper and that works better. Go back to my layers and as I was saying before, there's lots of layers now that we could condense. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to condense layers two to 10. So from layers two all the way up to 10, I condense them down into one layer now. Now, if you feel like you've got tons of options and you don't need to do that, then keep them separated because you've got lots of RAM and it's not going to be any restrictions. But if you are someone that's limited to, say, 19 layers or whatever, then you're going to find that beneficial. So I'm going to create a layer on top of that. And now it's called layer three. Go back to my colors and I've got this third color now, which is a slightly richer, warmer version. And I'm probably going to go in again with my leatherwood brush. 
set slightly bigger at about 3% size and about 80% opacity. And I'm just going to set a point now for where a really a good number of the trees are going to be growing from. So this will represent the kind of top layer of some of my grass texture. So it's going to run probably all the way across here, not quite touching that previous layer in some places, but other places it will come very close. So something like this. I don't care really what goes on underneath it. Doesn't matter too much. Adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in about 3% again, create a new layer on top. Go back to my colors. I'm going to use the fourth color in, which is a lighter, still warm, but a lighter version. And perhaps I'll go in with my airbrushing this time. So airbrushing, soft brush, 4% size and 30% strength. And I'm just going to start just working into this bottom section, just soften in a lighter color, not so it quite goes up to the top, but it can almost, and it can nudge into that top area in some places and that's fine. But in other areas, I probably want to preserve a little bit of a darker tone just at the very top edge. So all the way across. And then again, it doesn't matter what happens below too much, like so. Go to my layers and create a new layer. Back to my colors. And we've got this nice dark color now, which is what we're going to use for the trees that emerge from this area. So we're going to go to the airbrushing, but medium brush this time. It's going to give us a sharpness for the tree trunks. Everything else can be quite textural and soft, but this has to be a very much a sharper element. I'm going to go down to the largest part of 2% and dare I say it, we'll have it at 100%. No, I can't never quite bring myself to do that. We'll put it down to 90%. I just feel somehow it creates a touch more variety and I think that works better. I'm always very reluctant to use anything at 100% when it's this kind of detail. So from this section now, so not from top edge, but just slightly into this slightly warmer and lower region, we're going to have some tree trunks emerge up and create like this. And maybe I'll just touch it slightly down into the middle of 2%, keep it at the 90% strength. And you might have another thinner tree that just runs alongside it. And we're going to continue to build up a series of trees. So maybe just leaning slightly a different way. We'll have a much thicker tree. So I'm going to fill in the middle of those two lines for this one. And we're going to proceed like that. Now these are generally straight lines, but they're not completely. They can bend, they can have a bit of a wobble, especially when they're, they're thinner shapes. The thinner ones don't really have a requirement of being quite as straight up and down. I'm going to make that one quite thick, actually. I think that would be a good shape for that one. So variety, you don't want to go too far. You want to keep a little bit of variation. I'm going to have that one extending further down. So obviously we need to think about distance here as well. So anything that is super chunkier, you might want to think where you're moving it further forward, in which case you probably need to bring it further down away from that horizon line. So this is going to be quite a destructive process where we're covering up a lot of what we've already created. And that's absolutely fine. As long as you have a little slightly bit of a thicker trunk at the bottom, then you can just really go for this. Don't worry about little bits that stick out because we're going to add some branches that stick out anyway. So that isn't, again, a problem. Perhaps just going to concentrate on some thinner ones to begin with, and then I can go in and thicken them up and add more if necessary. So I'm going to continue to add some thin ones and they can cross over each other too. Perhaps that's a bit dramatic. There's nothing wrong with them almost colliding in some places. I'm going to continue to do more over here as well. I'm going to do just initially these lines all the way to the very top. Okay, so I feel like I've got a number of thinner tree trunks. I'm going to have to go in, just adjust them slightly to make some thicker ones in places. Some that go in front, obviously, but some of the ones I've already done, I may even go in there and thicken them up as well. I'm going to do a couple that are really cut in front that are going to be thicker trees. Like I say, thicken one or two of these up. Not all of them. We need to have some that are definitely thinner, but then we're going to have ones that cut in front, perhaps. that just even obscure though, all of the things we just created. You know, it is a destructive process creating. And as much as you might get some shapes and you think, oh yeah, they're working, then 
well, we're just going to destroy them in a moment anyway, with things that cut in front and just build up the layers. And it is important to be not too precious about anything you've created at any stage, because you need to be able to just go over it to add to the effect sometimes. So I'm just going in, thickening up some of those branches. Maybe I could do it with a thicker brush. So just under the 3%, really the top end of 2%, thicken up at the bottom of some of these tree trunks. Really have a sense of them being grounded. Try not to make them too thick higher up. Like I say, any little anomalies that stick out aren't too much of a problem, as long as they're not massive. Okay, I'm going to just slightly blur that in. So Gaussian blur, blur that in, 2%, no more. Create another layer on top. Go to my artistic leatherwood brush, and I'm gonna to go to this color on the bottom row, which is very dark, but it's just a hint lighter than things we've just been using. So I'm gonna put it to 2% size, and keep it pretty high up there at 80% opacity. And we're just gonna have this texture sort of sweeping across these now. So whenever I do kind of like a pine tree, I just kind of alternate rock from left to right, and these kind of are textures, and that is generally how I'll we'll build that up. So I'm going to roughly so, or roughly speaking, do that on these ones too, in places. But they will collide, so you, you don't really don't need to agonize over it. As long as you're just creating this kind of texture and thinking about that generally, when you sit back and look at it, does it does it kind of portray that kind of texture? If it doesn't, then perhaps you need to just work into it a little bit more. So like I say, I'm just rocking left to right. I've not identified which tree trunk that this foliage belongs to, but it doesn't really matter. It's the combined effect. So you can go up and then pick another one and just continue to left to right. And obviously it's gonna get more sparse as it goes lower down. Sometimes you get the lower branches having some foliage too, some needles, but most of the foliage in the needles are typically going to be a little higher up. Now, I do want to keep some light that comes through most of the time, but then some areas are going to condense pretty effectively and it's going to shut out. So I'm going to allow some areas to really blot out the light and gather and bunch together, but then it's important to leave some gaps as well. So I'm going to work across all of these trees and continue that effect. So over on this top side, I'm going to really shut out most of the light up here. Just so happens that it condenses at the top. It's an easy texture to add in this. The brush is really fantastic for this. It speeds up the process, creates lots of individual points of texture, which you could do manually with something like a soft brush and painstakingly go in there and do them all yourself, which don't get me wrong, there's times where that's appropriate and I do do that kind of thing. But then also, you know, actually you can speed up the process by using an appropriate brush. And I'm just gonna work across for these ones too. I might even add one or two more tree trunks once I see how the overall effect is working. But initially, let's just blot them in. So I'm just gonna fast track you through this a little bit more unless I can think of more important things. So let's just fill in this area. So in this low, lower section, I do want some areas of foliage, but I'm just, I'm lightly tapping it. I'm keeping it really sparse. I may do some little twigs that just stick out from the trees. So there's gonna need to be some foliage of sorts, but it really is sparingly compared to the upper parts. We could even turn the opacity down, perhaps if we're doing some of that, so about 50%. And then when we're at, in fact, even lower, let's put it lower to about 30%. That way I can add them and they're just not quite as impactful. Okay, back up on the opacity, back up to say 80%, and continue. Now, even with this brush, it is going to be a time consuming process, but you just need to buckle in, settle down, and sometimes just get on with this. And just allow yourself to sit back and really look at it, and is it, kind of working? Is it creating the feel that you're looking for? You do need to spend the time on this. Although my tutorials might, you know, be under an hour typically, 30 minutes to 50 minutes somewhere in that region. You know, it takes me usually over an hour to actually paint it and then I edit some of the detail out, speed it up, certainly edit out any mistakes. 
that I say when I'm talking, but if you were doing this and you wanted to print it extra large and have it just work a little bit better when it is viewed in more detail, then really you're gonna have to spend longer on those types of textures and detail. I'm going to go back to layer 5, where the tree trunks were on. In fact, I'm going to go back to layer 4 and click the plus symbol so it creates a layer, layer 7, which is crucially underneath the tree trunks. And I'm going to switch to the fourth colour on the middle row. And because this layer is behind the foliage I've already created and the tree trunks, I'm going to start to add some of this in, and it is warmer. It's just going to create a little bit more of a sense of depth and variety of tone. You don't really want anything to appear completely monotone and flat in terms of the colours. And just hints of this can really start to bring out a little bit more variety. I'm going to use some techniques on the next layer to really bleach out and create some warm drama cutting through here as well. But this certainly is going to start that process for us. And maybe I'll just put it up to 3% just to speed it up in places. Okay, I'm going to go to my top layer and create a layer on top, layer 8, change the blend mode from normal, I'll scroll down to add, and it changes that end to an A. I'm going to use the soft brush, I'm going to change to this orange at the right hand side of the bottom row. So I'm going to put it at around 40% size and about 10% strength. I'm just going to decide where the sun is going to be, so I'm going to have the sun in about this area. Tap it in a few times and maybe extend that, just sort of push it up into this top region a little bit as well, like that. Create a new layer on top. Again, I'm going to change the layer, the blend mode to the add. Again, with a soft brush, I'm going to shift from that orange to the next orange, which is a slightly more yellowed version. Turn it down to about 30% size and again, about 10% strength and just couple more taps in this region just brings some intensity of that slightly more yellow. I might just do this on separate layers. So another layer, blend mode down to add. Then the next color, which is this, not quite the yellowest one, but the next one. And I just want to create a bit more yellow in this area. It's really turning the tree trunks much more orange in appearance, which is great. You can push it that way and that way a little bit more. And that's having exactly the right kind of the desired effect. I'm happy with the way that that's working. So I'm going to go to my top layer and create a layer on top. I'm going to stick with the normal on the blend mode. I'm going to go back to my colors and I'm going to use some of these colors at the bottom now. So I'm going to go for this second color, which is not quite solid black, but it's a very dark color compared to what we have used. Back to my airbrushing medium brush, put it at around 5% size and why not do it 100% it's really a much more foreground I want it to be powerful and I'm just going to have it obliterate really cut in front of things we've already created just need to be bold doesn't pay to be too timid on these kind of elements and another one here maybe another one here just try and get the shape how you want it like I say a little bit thicker at the bottom of the tree trunk and the beauty of foreground elements like this is you can swap and change them around. They're not fixed. So you can easily go to your transform tool and move them to where you want. Or if it's just one particular one that's in the way, you can erase it or even use the, or the freehand selection tool and draw around the one you want to move. Then go to the transform and just move that one. So you don't really need to be stuck with the first things that you do. So really play around with it, find the exact placement that you're happiest with and go from there. I'm just going to go to the transform tool, move it perhaps to about here. You can always add some thinner tree trunks and foliage behind them later on if we feel it's necessary. I'm going to reduce this size down to 2% now and I can go in there and just refine some of these edges, give it a hint more sharpness, really control that a little bit more. Okay, so on this layer with the tree trunks now, if I tap on it and turn on alpha lock, I can now, with any brush, just add to the features on that layer and it doesn't interfere with the rest of the image. So obviously I don't want to do that. But what I am going to do is go back to my artistic, 
leatherwood brush and I've actually amended it. I'm going to amend it now as I show you. So I've changed the spacing and I'm going to put it at around 30% spacing. It just creates a little bit more of a gap between each of those textures, which is going to be useful for the tree bark. And I'm also going to go to the grain. And if you turn the grain up, you can see the canvas texture that's part of the brush. I'm going to turn it to none. Now it's the kind of brush that I use for all sorts of different features and I'm going to have a go at using it for this tree bark texture. Now there might be other brushes that you want to experiment with that you might prefer, but I'm going to have a go at this one. So I'm going to go to my colours in the bottom row and this first colour there, which is a very warm colour but pretty dulled out in terms of being dark. I'm going to put the brush at about 3% size and about 70% strength opacity. and this brush behaves differently depending whether you press on lightly or you press on hard. If you press on harder, you get a bigger version of the brush mark, but it isn't a darker, more intense, saturated version. So I'm just going to go up and down. This generally, this is the darker colour that I'm going to use for the texture. So it's not going to be seen as much or not as dramatically as the other colour, but it just lays a bit of a groundwork of texture. And then when we place the lighter colour on top, it's got something to interact with. Then staying on the same layer, I'm gonna to go to this gray color, which is third in from the left, turn the strength of that down to about 40%, stay at around the 3% size. And I'm just gonna start working that up and down this tree trunk, probably preferencing going more for the right hand side than the left. And I can really just quite freely start to add some of this texture. Now it's gonna get us part of the way there, but not totally, so it just is quite forgiving, gives us some textures to play with right from the outset. And then you can always go in more manually and tweak this if necessary, but it's a really nice starting point. And I'm just gonna double over it a few times nearer the top. Some of these perhaps just ratchet it up a little bit. I want a bit more intensity, something like this. You can then go to an even lighter color. So probably gonna to go to the top row at the right hand side. Turn that down because it is quite strong and quite a lot brighter. But I'm just gonna start bringing that in a little bit at the top as well. I'm bringing some of that a little bit further downwards. So vary it up, it doesn't all have to be exactly the same intensity. Play around a bit until you're happy with the, the overall effect and it seems to kind of fit with the, the areas. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to change my layer. So I'm going to go back to layer five where we had the rest of the tree details. I'm going to turn alpha lock on for that layer as well. I'm staying on the same brush that I've just been using, but I'm going to turn the strength of it down to about 10%. And I'm just going to start working in some of these textures really quite freely. And I really don't need to spend a lot of time on these. Just work them in. It's just going to stop them being too flat whenever they're big enough to notice or dark enough to start noticing, you know, maybe it does have texture, then that's going to assist. And just gives them a bit more vitality and a bit more life in the background there. I'm gonna change my brush back to my airbrushing. Well, I'll keep it on the soft brush. I'm gonna have it at around 3% and 100% opacity. I'm gonna have it at around 3% size and about 40% opacity. And I'm just going to go back to one of my dark colors. So I'll choose the second color on the bottom row. I'm still working on layer five that had all the tree trunks. And I feel like I can just vary it up a little bit now. So I'm just going to go over one or two of them and make them a bit darker. So they're not all completely flat looking and they're not all the same level of darkness and saturation. So I can pick out certain ones, darken them up just to create a little bit more variation. And I don't need to worry about being particularly neat because it's really not possible once the alpha lock is on to work outside of the, the shapes and lines. It's a real advantage at this level in this area. I can also do that trick to layer six. So I can go to that layer, turn on the alpha lock. And if I want to just continue some of the tree trunks upwards a little bit, just so they kind of stand out a little bit from the foliage. Perhaps I need to turn that down a little bit because the tree trunks are going to be lighter, aren't they? So I'll turn that down to about 2% or thinner rather, not lighter. And I can just go over where they should be. So they stand out a little bit more prominently amongst the foliage like this. Just subtle tweaks, but it can make a big difference. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back to my top layer, which was layer 11, and create a layer above that. If I tap on the layer and do clipping mask, it now links it to the layer that's above or below that rather. And it allows me to use different colors on top, but again, it only references the layer underneath. Now it isn't going to be on the layer underneath, it's on a separate layer, but it again allows me to only add things within the confines of the space of the layer underneath it. So it's really useful. So I've created a layer above, then turn on clipping mask. I'm just gonna clear it first of all, and I'm gonna to go to the end symbol and scroll down again and use the add. And with the soft brush again, using the orange to begin with on the bottom row, so nearest the white, I'm gonna have it at 2% size and low, at around 10% strength and opacity. And I'm just going to carefully go along this edge and I want it to just add a bit of a highlight along the edge and you don't have to be neat again because it just you know, gets rid of the need to be absolutely neat along the edge. It kind of does that for you. You can only add it onto the inside of that tree shape, which is really helpful. And I'm going to turn then the brush size up to about 10% size and even further down to about 4% opacity. And I'm just going to start, especially where I'm planning to put the sun around here, just start eating into this tree area. So I'm going to perhaps just go over where the sun will be a few times like this. And you can see it's just adding it to where the tree trunk is. I don't really want to do too much of that onto everything else that I've already created. I just want to impact the actual trees, which this is really useful for. And you can see I'm just adding it as a more of a, a glow onto these tree trunks. And it just kind of makes the impact of the background really that much more effective. I can even go back and do this with layer six, which had my, sorry, layer five, which had my tree trunks on, create a layer above that, tap on the layer and put on clipping mask for that too. Also change the properties from normal to add. I'm going to use the second yellow color. And again, just take away a little bit from the edges of this tree, not too much certainly the sunlight is going to have an impact and perhaps just try the actual yellow as well just to really bring that in even more on the edge that's really closest to that sun where it's going to be that means i can go to the very top layer and create a layer above it and i am going to add the sun in now to this new layer change the end to an add work with the third color so not quite the most orange but the one next to it Brush size is around 10% size initially and about 10% strength opacity. And just where I want the sun to be, just tap it in a couple more times like that. Then I'm going to move to the next one nearest the yellow, not the yellow itself. Reduce it down to about 8%. Again, a few more taps. Then to the actual yellow, reduce it down to about 6%. Again, a few more taps. And then last of all, I'm going to go in with the white at around 4% size and exactly where I want the sun to be, just slightly offset, just to hint more towards the tree. Just tap that in a few times until we get a really bright sense of where the sun is. Why not put the opacity up for this, actually really make it quick. Get the sun in there. If I really want to bleach it out, I can go to the adjustments, bloom, and then just whack that effect up as far as I want to. I don't really want to go to 100%. Somewhere around the 40% is working sufficiently, I think. Really helps build that glow in. And at the risk of perhaps overdoing it a little bit, but why not? I'm going to take the risk anyway. Create another layer above it, change the N to an add. And again with the soft brush set to, well, let's put it at 50% size, 10% opacity. I'm going to use the strongest orange next to the white. Just tap a couple of times where the sun is, three or four times, should do it. And I'll just show you the difference. It's not made a huge difference, but it, it just, again, just gels everything to again, together a little bit more. I think that's working as a glow effect. On that same layer, I'm gonna change my brush size down to 2% and the strength down to about 5%. Change to the slightly more subdued orange not quite as intense. And I'm just gonna send out a couple of 
sunbeams out from that center. In fact, we're gonna do it even more controlled. So the very lowest part of 2% will be necessary for this. And just from the sun itself, sending out some sun rays, just really cutting in front of the tree trunk. And obviously sun rays are gonna start off narrowest near the center of the sun and they get more intense as they get closer to it as well. So I'll go over it particularly when it's right next to the sun itself. Put it on the lower pass, I'd rather build it up gradually than overpower it straight away and overdo it. So something like this. Again, when it gets closer to it, just go over the, the rays a little bit more, closer to the edge, something like this. And just add a few more that just are, are lines that just build and add to the effect. But they're only light. And I think that, that really helps create that kind of lens flare effect. Again, we're going for something that looks kind of photographic, really. Okay, I'm going to go back to layer 10 and create a layer above it. And with the leatherwood brush again, I might as well leave the settings the same as we use for the tree bark. There's no harm in that. I'm going to use the second color in from the right in the middle row, so this orange. I'm going to have the brush size at the top end of 2%. I'm going to put the strength up to about 50%. It's going to be quite powerful, but we're going to blur it in. And then I'm just going to go across and with an upward gesture, start adding some of these textures in. Now it's going to be the grass, but I am going to blur it in. So you get this kind of textured, hazy look by the time I've blurred it, but we can cut across. You don't need to worry about the foreground trees because they're on a layer above. So you can really quite liberally just cut across now and it isn't a problem. All the way, maybe stopping somewhere around here, then adjustments, Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur it into about 5%. Then turn the strength down to about 30% opacity. And I'm just going to do a little bit more of that on top. Not too much, just to bring some slight clarity back in there as well. But again, I'm probably going to blur that in in a second. So I do like to blur things in. So adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in about another 3%. Put it up to the 3% size. And then I'm just going to quite liberally bring this in as another bank of textures and I can just cross it over a little bit as well. I don't, don't really care. We're just building up this texture. It's going to be the light just moving through the tall grass and it obviously is going to catch the light and illuminate it. And I think this overall effect by the time we finish is going to be really pleasant. And then adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in about another 3%. I'm going to create a layer above that. Go back to my colors and a third in from the right this time, so it is a darker colour. And we can just bring some of this in, so perhaps I need to put this up to about 60%, stay at the 3% size, and this will just help blend in some of that effect. Again, just it's just creating texture. We're going to do some grass over the top, some more distinct blades of grass that really just sort of help merge these together and bring them to life a little bit more, but we do need these in. So I'll cut all the way across here, and then Gaussian Blur, under adjustments, blur it in to about 4%. I'll just alternate back to layer 16. I'm going to need to add a darker colour to this now to merge everything together a little bit. So I'm going to the darker colour on the bottom row, not the absolute black almost, but the one before that. And with my airbrushing soft brush set to about 10% size and about 30% opacity, I can just start building this in gradually. So it kind of merges with some of that texture. We do need a darker base note underneath before we start adding some of the blades of grass. Otherwise it's got nothing to contrast against. Back up to layer 17. Maybe we should really do this on a, a layer above it. So now it's layer 18. Back to my colors. And I'm gonna use these two subdued colors before I start adding any of the highlights back in. So I've got this gray color, which if I go to my sketching 6B pencil, set to, well, it needs to be quite big, somewhere around 40% looks about right. I'm going to put the strength down to about 30% and I'm just going to start building in some lower blades of grass initially. And they can go just cut it across each other and go in different directions. Some of them might just sort of curl over and interrupt perhaps. So don't be too afraid of creating a mishmash of different shapes and lines. That is going to be the effect overall.
Perhaps I really should move that to the very top, in fact, why not? Put it on the top layer. Because it is going to now, in this foreground detail, going to cut in front of the tree trunks that we've already got in the foreground. This is probably the most foreground detail. So really work this in. Allow it to be kind of curving and slightly random. You can get clumps where lots of strands seem to go in a similar direction, but then other times you're just gonna get random ones that just sort of cut across and in front and disrupt. You can send it up into the background a little bit as well. We're gonna have highlights that really go in front of a lot of this. So this is gonna become more subdued. So don't worry about it too much. It's gonna look a bit scruffy for a while. It's kind of part of the process. Perhaps create another layer on top of that. Go back to our colors. Now I'm gonna use the orange we used before, second from the right, and I'm just going to start bringing in some highlighted blades of grass here now. So some of them are really gonna be impactful. We can alternate between that one and the very end one. The very end one, as you can see, is quite considerably brighter. So maybe if you can just be a bit more controlled and go over some of this, you can even go into the end of some of the gray blades of grass and just have it so it catches the light as it goes taller and higher up you don't have to stick to it as such either. So I'm definitely being a bit more controlled with this, slightly less haphazard, but I do want this to be representing that. The top, some of this grass, as it just cuts out of the shadow area and catches the, the light, it's really going to just sort of ping some of this warmth and light. So I can alternate between those two oranges. So maybe in this light middle distance, you can use this more subdued orange. Again, just use it for like they represent the very ends of the blades of the grass, they just become a bit more, more noticeable, especially in that distant area. You can just pepper some of that texture in, allow it to cut across in some places, just like we did with the gray. Might turn the opacity up a little bit to like 50%, perhaps in the background. I can just go in and manually put in all the blades of grass in that area too. Really gonna catch the light strongly in some areas compared to others. So it can really be more apparent there. And then as it cuts through here, but then still at this larger opacity, depending on how you feel about, again, how heavy handed you happen to be. If it goes too strong, then you can always dial it back to more like the 30% again. And again, just go to the very end of some of these blades, be a bit more controlled in places. You can just create new ones too. It doesn't just need to be on top of the, the gray grass that you've already created, but it does, it gives it a bit more depth. I think if you just single out some of those blades and highlight the end of it, it gives it a bit of believability, I think. But once you do that a few times, then you can just put in some slightly more random highlights as well. And the two kind of work together. And again, to the lighter color, perhaps just one or two really zing and really vibrantly stand out in that sun. Perhaps use that a little bit more sparingly, maybe use that last. So we'll go back to the second from the right and just continue to work with that. And again, some of the techniques I'm showing you, you can just, you know, alpha lock a layer and work really haphazardly and even the grass with the gray was a little bit haphazard but now at this point it's probably a bit more fine-tuned and i'm going to do some more foreground bits of grass the sunlight that's cutting through here so almost everything that cuts through this channel between the trees is going to have that strong sense of highlight and glow really build up that grass effect. And then you can even go back to the gray and when it cuts to a shadow area, perhaps we can just continue the same blade of grass, but then it, it goes into a shadow bit. And that can really further enhance the idea that it just moves in and out of the sun glow. So you can create some lines that seem to coincide with the highlighted ones too. So it seems to be like some sections pick up the light and then some sections are still in shadow. And you can further play around with the idea and just bring them into the sun as and when required. It's going to take a little while to build up this effect, but it is worth putting in the time. I think that the overall look at the end is going to be dependent on how patient you're being with this area and this level of detail. It is the foreground element, so if you really sell it short in terms of time and effort, then it's going to show probably the first thing you notice after the overall effect, you'll look at the grass. So spend a bit longer on this. We can go back to the gray layer. I'm going to actually go to the layer and just 
turn it down a little bit. I feel like it's a bit fierce, a bit strong. So if I put it more like about 60%, I think that that combination is perhaps a little bit better. I can go back in with that gray and the brush again, and I continue to just chip away at some of that dark color that's underneath. I don't really want much of that dark color to remain really once I've added the grass on top. So I can just go back in and chip away at some of that, kind of just systematically remove it. Again, take the time. Sometimes you just can't rush some features. Doesn't mean that every single brush stroke needs to be agonized over, but still, it requires a little bit of time sometimes. So keep building it up. The effect is definitely going to grow. The more you complicate it, the more and more grass that seems to texture it. And that's starting to build up the impression. I'll go back to the very top layer that had our highlights on it, back in with those two colors. And again, I can just further increase the impact that it has by going over it and adding more, perhaps shorter lines because we're just getting a sense of the top edges for the most part. But then every now and again, perhaps we'll just get some blades of grass that really cut down and you see quite all along it, a sense of the highlight. And think about where the sun's coming from. So all of this section probably is gonna pick up the light. It's a really nice open area that's really gonna benefit from much of that texture and light. Again, some maybe in the foreground here that are just catching the light again, just to contrast with the more muted greys and dark browns. I think it really will help. This is probably the most difficult bit in a sense of this tutorial because it just takes time and it's just trying to figure out what's looking right and maybe just had a few more blades of grass in some areas rather than others. And it's a little bit by feel rather than an exactness, as most art is really, I suppose. But all I can do is show you an example and show you the, the general process. And then if you just spend the time trial and error these textures a little bit, you might not get it first time, but you've just got to play around and hopefully you'll start to build up something like these kind of effects for yourself. And I'm just gonna do a few very much along the foreground and the bottom, just to break up that bottom edge as well. I can even go to the ends of the blades of the grass and obviously we're gonna have the, the kind of seed areas. And if you really highlight that in the more foreground ones, it's going to sell the illusion for distant ones too. So you don't need to do it for everywhere in this, this in the distance, but you just do it a little bit in the foreground, it, I think your imagination can presume the rest is there. And again, I'm going to move to the strongest orange or the lightest orange rather, and use that just to pick out some of those details, like I was saying. Just on the very ends, perhaps. And you could really spend a long time on this. I'm, I'm trying to restrict this down to the you know, getting you to the basics as efficiently as possible, but something like this grass texture, you could just spend ages on this. So spend as long as you feel you can, feel as long as you want to, as long as you're enjoying it and getting some progress and you start to feel like the effect is building up. There will come a point where you think, well, it's kind of there and I'm not really adding anything now, or I'm not quite sure how to make it better. So you can take a step back until you feel you either know what to do or it's as good as it's going to get. Have some patience with it though. Definitely about layering of textures. Just adding a few more really nice highlights in the, the absolute foreground, just to really nicely contrast, create that sense that there's different areas. Now I'm again thinking about channeling the light through the tree in this area. So it's going to have a section here where it really ramps up the highlights and then maybe another section here where it cuts through and there's no harm in going back and actually removing some of that warmth. If necessary, you could go back in with the eraser. I'm gonna set it to the soft brush, have it about 3% size and probably low on the strength to about 10%. But you could certainly start thinking, well, I don't want too much of the warmth in certain areas. Perhaps I'm a bit stronger, I'm gonna put up to 30%. I don't want it too strong in some areas. I want to increase the sense 
that the trees are creating shadow. So I can just remove some of it in that area, for example. Maybe just make sure immediately this part of the tree is a little less, maybe over here a little bit less, and you can do that. And maybe even for some of these four, you know, distant trees rather, and you can just remove a little bit of the light there for them. Remember your perspective. So you have like the source of the light is the sun. So all of your lines need to kind of point towards it. If you're going to do those kind of stripes, you can even go back to the layer 18 and obviously continue that effect. And we even had that on a more background layer, didn't we? So we had that on layer 16. So really way back there, you could remove certain sections. Back in on my top layer, just a bit little more fine tuning with my brush again, set to my two warmest colors. And again with the orange, just a few more touches. And the only thing I feel left to do is create another layer and with my medium brush on airbrushing, reduce down to top end of 1%, maybe the lowest part of 2% at about 60% opacity. Let's go to my black color here and I'm just going to start adding just some features, some little branches that stick out. Perhaps that's a little bit too intense. So I'll put that down to about 40%. Perhaps there's just some little branches that sort of kick out here and there from some of these trees. I feel like we're just missing one or two lifelike little details. And you can spend, again, as long as you want, fine tuning things like this. It's just the last little thing that arguably adds just a lot more depth. Wouldn't necessarily feel it needs too much of this. Just sharpen up some of those little details as and where you feel appropriate. Okay, I'm gonna leave this tutorial here at this point. I definitely could continue to refine it further, but I feel like I've managed to create the overall effect and I hope you've enjoyed following along. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and don't forget the bell notification to make sure you are notified of all my future videos. Thanks for watching. See you back here soon.